welcome to the uh, City of Dallas Intermediate Chess class. We are studying Bobby Fischer Grandmaster Tournament positions so that we can think like a Grandmaster. So tonight we're going over a 1959 chess game where Bobby Fischer was playing the white side in the candidates tournament of that year. Uh, somebody raise your hand and tell me who Bobby Fischer was in chess history. Yes, yeah, Sean. The first um the first American the first and only American um chess champion. That's pretty close. First and only American Grandmaster to ever become world chess champion. So American chess players, we're looking for the second American world chess champion, which is usually dominated by the Europeans or the uh, Grandmasters from India. So, chess game here. Let's look at the pawn position. Can someone raise your hand and tell me what's happening in the pawn structure of this game? Yes, Joanne in the back. structure is mis destroyed. When grandmasters use the term destroy in, in terms of pawn structure, they talk about pawn weaknesses. So someone raise your hand and tell me what's Black's pawn weakness in this position. Yes, Braxton. Um, the pawns are F6. The pawn on F6? What, what's, what's so bad about that guy? There's no protection. Oh, true, but every pawn in the back has no protection. We can say the same thing about the pawn, white pawn on C2, right? Is the pawn on C2 a bad pawn or a weakness? Eh, not really, right? So what's a glaring weakness in Black's pawn structure that just kind of just jumps off the chessboard in your face, right? We used to say that in sports terms, right? Uh, yes, John. There's, uh, I would say the pawn on F6, because there's two bad pawns. Uh, please, one person talking at a time. Where we are video recording. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay, so the black pawn on F6, you kind of think back what uh, Braxton said. A black pawn on F6, but there's also a black pawn on F3. So what do we call these guys? Just tell me. Double. Double pawns. But they're not, they're not isolated because there is a black pawn buddy on G4. So they're not too crazy bad, right? But what's another really glaring problem in black's pawn structure? Yes, Sean. Okay, let's talk about pawn weaknesses first, and then we can talk oh. about the uh, pawn advantages, oh. pawn strengths. Okay. So we want to concentrate on pawn weaknesses first, right? So name the pawn weakness, anybody? Mark, in the corner. Holes. Okay, but pawn, yeah, pawn structure de de detects holes, tells us about holes. Uh, black holes in black's position, white holes in white's position, that'd be too scientific or for science fiction, right? But can we say that this black pawn on A4 it's is a kind of pawn weakness because it is isolated? Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's why I was asking the class. That's a pawn weakness, but it also is a pawn strength. Pawn weakness is a black, this black pawn has no black pawns to left or right of him. This pawn buddy should help support him. That pawn's on its own. The only thing to protect that pawn in this position is the black king, from black's point of view. So black king's trying to race over here to protect the pawn and get the pawn all the way down to A1. Turn into a queen, queen rook, not a bishop, would normally turn into a queen. But that means this pawn is a strength. Someone raise your hand and tell me what makes that pawn a strong pawn, even though it is an isolated one. Braxton. Uh, the king can come back to the back of them, and then when the rook tries to capture it, he can just take the rook. Oh, sure, but talk, talk about the pawn. <laughs> the pawn by itself. I just say we just kind of blank everything off the board and talk about that pawn. I say blank everything off. Uh, look at that A file and the B file. I only see one chess man on the A and B files. And there he is, right there. So talking about that guy, you know what Braxton said is true. Talking about that guy, how is he a strength? Joanna. Because there is no white pawn walking it or attacking it. Because it's a past pawn. Right. Grandmasters call this pawn a past pawn, P-A-S-S-E-D, because there's no enemy pawn that can stop it. Now, before we talk about uh, the rest of the position, look at all the pawns 
for black and white. Is this the only pass pawn on the board? Yes or no? Yes. 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 This is the only pass pawn, black or white, on the board. So there's black's most valuable pawn. No wonder the black king is kind of wandering over here to protect him to get him a pawn to a1 and turn to a queen. Now look at white's pawns. So I'm going to raise your hand. I'm hearing a voice in the corner. So I'm going to please raise your hand and tell me about white's pawn structure and then what's white's strength or strongest pawn. Sean. Please raise your hand. Can everybody talk at the same time? 
You add it all up. So I'm going to raise your hand and tell me how many points, material points, is white winning to buy. Rebecca? Four. Right. Five minus one. And if someone didn't notice that this pond over here is going to pass on the board, so there's a little extra plus for black. A little bit extra plus. Because that's a pass pond. Pass pond become more and more valuable. If this black pond makes it to A1 and turns it to a queen, how much is that pond worth? Nine. Nine. If we say a queen is worth nine. You can have your own point system for interior chest if you want to. On the average, that's what grand master generally go with. If the pond is on A2 and one step away from turning into a nine point queen, how much is that pond worth? Just tell me. Eight, 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 eight. Seven, eight, perhaps. You can think about it that way. If the pond is on A3, how much is that pond worth? Six or five, right? Five, six, four, you know, something like that. The closer and closer that pond gets to the commotion square, the more and more valuable it becomes. And the bigger and bigger the monster is. Right? I think it's not his monster. The black monster is four, right? With all that said, I did put a red star here for the promotion square, so I keep an eye on that. With all that said, let me read the clue, the clue here, and then I'll let you, as a class, raise your hand and tell me where you think White's best move is. So here's the clue. White seems to have an inevitable mating attack, even against Black's, oh, excuse me, I'm reading the wrong clue. My bad. I need to give credit first, by the way. This is Bruce Panafini's clue for this 1959 chess position. Believe it or not, Bobby Fisher was a teenager at the time. Bobby Fisher was a teenager at the time, playing against some of the strongest grandmasters in the world. Okay. Wrong clue. Let me read the right clue. White's rook. He's a rook ahead, but Black's a pawn may easily threaten to queen. You see, people are talking about two queens, they need to promote and turn the pawn into a queen. Winnie back the rook. If this rook is gone, that black pawn over here is gone, this looks like it's king of five pawns versus king of five pawns. This may be a draw. Right? Mm -hmm. If the black, his pawn turns to a rook, and white sides the rook over here on the eight and sacrifices the five pawn rook for the nine point queen, then it's king of five pawns versus king of five pawns. This looks like, this looks like a draw after that. Bobby Fisher, playing the white pieces, eviscerated that pawn at once. That's what Bruce Panettini said. With that in mind, raise your hand and tell me white's fantastic move. Sean. Keep the black 
king from going over here and escorting the black A4 pod, white should be able to win, right? So congratulations, Braxton. Long distance handshake here. That is move Bobby Fisher play. Raise your hand if you agree with that. I don't think anybody's going to disagree with Bobby Fisher, right? <laughs> or Braxton. Very good. And right here, black resigned. Can you believe it? Yep. Back up. When, when, when black resigns, black is saying that white wins. This is the same. It's almost the same thing in this checkmate. In chess tournaments, white gets one point, black gets zero points. But let's that's, that's go ahead and play this out. If, if black moves the king somewhere, so it's doing a dance with the king, it leaves all the black pawns in place, ready to tell me what white does. John. No, no, no. No, no, in general, if the black king starts doing a dance with these pawns alone, what does white do? Don't tell me who, just tell me in general what does white do. He moves what? He eliminates the pawn in A4. Well, it'd be kind of hard to get the rook to uh, no. the A4 if black is still guarding and all the black can probably dance away from it. It'd take too long. Yeah. Well, uh, what, what I was thinking of is if, if black leaves his pawn structure alone and starts doing a dance with his king, then white will move his king over to the queen's side, and then black line will, no deal, have to, will have to deal with not only a white rook, but a white king. And, then and white will double tackle it. Even if the black can somehow get over there and protect it. Two is more than one. So, but what if, so I said black starts doing a dance with the black king. What if black says pawn to a3? Okay? Toward the end of our chess lesson, what does white do now? And you got it. And Bobby Fisher saw these moves in advance before he did not say rook captures pawn to g4, but rook to b8. He saw these moves in advance. What if black moves his pawn to a3? What's white do now? Sharp. He moves his rook to a8. To where? a8. Well, if you move the rook to a8, this uh, nice little uh, like laser beam against the black king disappears. Oh, yeah. Soup. It's gone. Now the black king can come over to b3, and white's got a more difficult problem on his hands. Right? So, okay, well, hold on, hold on. We've got to give everybody a chance, right? So, there's, there's okay, hold on. Let's give everybody a chance. What else could White do other than Rook to A8? Trevor. Um, he could move his Rook to B7. Hmm. He could. He could. Is there a better move for the Rook? So I agree with Sean and I agree with Trevor that White should consider moving the Rook. Especially since the Black Pawn is two moves away from turning into a queen. So I can see why Sean would want to move the Rook over to A8 and try to get it, right? The Black King gets to the action. Why could the Rook on B8 to keep the Black King out of the action? And gets this very dangerous Pawn two moves away from turning into a knight or a queen. So what's White do instead? Brassy. He moves the Rook on B8 to B1. He could do that, but he's not attacking the Pawn. So let me... So, uh, just good you're analyzing all this. Is there a rook move that keeps the black king out of the action over here and attacks the black pawn at the same time? Sometimes the answer is no. But you at least ask the question, because the answer might be yes. So, with that in mind, let's give someone else a chance. Uh, Joanna in the corner. B3. Yes, we could move the white rook to B3, right? Because it still keeps the black king out of the action. You still got the laser beam against the black king, right? Right? And the black pawn is about to be captured. So raise your hand and tell me the move that black has to make here to save his pawn. Given that black king cannot come to the rescue, what move does black play now? Trevor. He goes to c4. No. He does what? He moves his king to c4. He moves his king to c4, and Y says pawn captures king. Thank you very much. Does everybody understand the number one rule in chess is you can never put your king in check? So I do want to thank you, Trevor, for bringing that to me a chance to mention that number one rule in chess for, especially for the internet audience out there. Right? You can never put your king in check. If you put your king in check, guess what? You're not playing chess. You're playing something that looks like chess, but it is not chess. Uh, you got a question? can, but the question was, how does black save his A3 pawn? Given that the black king can't get over there, what does black do? What's black's only move to save his A3 pawn? Because, yeah, black can kind of kind of say, look over here, look over here, look over the king's side. You know, black can say, white, don't pay attention to anything over here. Look over here, look over here. Distraction.
subtraction, and subtractions are possible uh, moves in chess. But is there is there a move that's readily saved upon Braxton? candidate terminate. Right. I, Bobby Fisher in 1959 was a teenager. Wow. Right? Wow. A teenager playing his adult grand national throughout the world. And what's a candidate, candidate tournament? At this time, the candidate tournament is a tournament of only grandmasters by invitation only. The winner of the grandmaster tournament gets the right to play against the reigning world chess champion. So, as a team, Bobby Fischer now can play the reigning world champion. If he had won this tournament, he did not. He won this game, but he did not win the tennis tournament in 1959. It took him until 1971 to win the Candace tournament and then play against Boris Baskin in 1972 for the World Jazz Championship when he became the only American grandmaster.